We've all seen the meme, I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Well, did you know the US military apparently feels the same way? Because they're putting some big plans in motion for the moon. That's right, besides being the reason why the tides change, and according to your astrologically inclined friends, the reason why you've been so irritated this week, the moon is also the next big frontier for the US Army. So what exactly is this high-level operational plan the US military has for the big orb in the night sky? We sent our investigators into the secret files of the Pentagon, something we probably shouldn't admit online, to find out. When you hear about people colonizing the moon, you might imagine domed high-tech cities with jets whizzing around and holograms everywhere. These visions of space colonization have been around for decades, if not centuries. After all, plans to get people to the moon are nothing new. Before Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin ever landed on the moon in 1969, when the US's obsession with space was at its peak, the government was already proposing military bases on the crater-filled rock that orbits us. Project Horizon, a study done in 1959, looked into how feasible a military base on the moon might be, with 12 soldiers stationed there by 1966 to safeguard it. We're not quite sure what they thought the moon needed safeguarding from, but based on the year and the object of the US paranoia at the time, we're going to assume it was communists. Either way, the idea was scrapped by Eisenhower, who although being a fan of space and the founder of NASA, decided to focus on more earthly projects like economic growth and building an interstate highway system. In the present day, now that we have either A apparently solved all of Earth issues, or B are starting to suspect Earth doesn't want us around for that much longer, the US military is once again seriously setting its sights on these other corners of the galaxy, starting with what NASA calls the gateway to our solar system, the Moon. However, the first thing the US military aims to build is something that might sound a little mundane to those of us envisioning the new Star Wars-like future, factories. It does make sense in some ways. If the US military is going to set up permanent dwellings and habitats on the moon, those structures all need to be manufactured, assembled, and built somewhere. And as we've previously discussed on this channel, carrying large loads into space is prohibitively expensive and time-consuming. So what's the solution? Build it all in space instead, more specifically in orbit or on the lunar surface, for now anyway. DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, and definitely not the supervillain conglomerate it sounds like, has started a new program to build manufacturing technologies that can be implemented off Earth. This program is called NOM4D, or NOMAD, Novel Orbital and Moon Manufacturing Materials and Mass Efficient Design. In addition to research projects, DARPA also apparently specializes in tongue twisters. As Bill Carter, the program manager of the Defense Sciences Office, stated, the point of the program is to develop foundational materials, processes, and designs needed to realize in-space manufacturing of large, precise, and resilient defense department systems. In other words, this means we as a species have to completely reconceptualize how we go about designing, manufacturing, and creating structures as they have to adapt to a quite literally alien atmosphere. One idea is to use lunar regolith from the moon, similar to volcanic sand on Earth, to build such structures. Professor Matthias Spurl, who has worked on the German Space Agency, says these materials would allow engineers to build igloo-like structures on the moon's surface. While theoretically, lunar regolith can be made as strong as concrete, we do not yet have the technology to do so. So far, only one-fifth of concrete strength has been achieved with regolith. But this is why DARPA wants private proposals for moon manufacturing. There has to be a solution people haven't thought of or invented yet. More advanced systems like antennas and solar panels will be made from materials transported from Earth, but assembled on the Moon, which will make them more precise and weight efficient in the lunar atmosphere. Besides the fact that it makes more logistical sense to build space structures in space using local materials instead of having to transport everything from Earth, the idea behind Nomad is also that technologies and structures made in space to begin with will be better able to withstand the extreme conditions of life on the Moon. The structures can also be more reliably tested in the atmosphere and conditions which they'll end up occupying. If they were being built on Earth, an exact recreation of lunar conditions to test structures in the world would be almost impossible to do. Why? Though it might look pretty and romantic to us down here on Earth, or like a big pizza pie according to one Mr. Dean Martin, the Moon is shockingly inhospitable to human life, and therefore also to most of what humans have built. Temperatures hover between 127 and negative 173 degrees Celsius, or approximately 260 to negative 343 degrees Fahrenheit, much of it depending on if you're in the shade, aka the dark side of the moon. 
Think of this temperature fluctuation like having to put on a jacket after the sun goes down except a thousand times more extreme and the weather immediately kills you. So actually, nothing like that. To give you an idea of how insane these temperature jumps are, the lowest temperature ever recorded on Earth was negative 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit at the Soviet Vostok station in Antarctica, compared to the moon's low of negative 343 degrees. Meanwhile, the moon's high temperature of 260 degrees is about 50 degrees higher than the temperature of boiling water. To add to the hindrances of life and industry on the moon, one lunar day is about 29 Earth days. This means there are two weeks of sunshine and then two weeks of darkness. So using solar power, which might otherwise be a great idea for a celestial body that spends a good amount of time getting pelted by the sun, will also pose challenges. There's no wind for wind power, and the lunar atmosphere means we can't exactly recreate a lot of energy generating sources we have here on Earth. However, DARPA is dead set on overcoming these challenges. The agency has already publicly stated in its plans it assumes an established space ecosphere by 2030, comprising reliable logistics and facilities. So human inventors, scientists, and entrepreneurs need to get the ball rolling on moon manufacturing fast. The point is to create designs so mass efficient that they can only be built off Earth. But what does that mean? Well, first of all, because the moon's gravity is approximately six times weaker than ours, a structure on the moon only needs to have one-sixth of the load-bearing strength it would have here. In this video, we assume everyone watching this is currently on planet Earth. In addition to this efficiency, though, other factors need to be taken into consideration. One of the most important is shielding. The surface of the moon is pelted with continuous solar and cosmic radiation, as well as meteorite impacts. In order to have any kind of longevity, structures have to be able to withstand these dramatic environmental pressures. Even worse, if you've ever been in a dust storm or in the general direction of Nevada, you know how annoying dry dust clinging to the air all around you can be. The moon's surface is covered with fine particles which frequently and easily get shot up into the atmosphere and hang around, especially because there's less gravity to bring them down fast. That means building surfaces, airlocks, and other exposed areas have to take this constant dust exposure into consideration as well. Lastly, the moon is surrounded by a vacuum. Certain construction materials will not be chemically or molecularly stable under vacuum conditions. Creating such lunar resilient structures might sound like an impossible achievement at this point. However, you might also be thinking, how much is all this going to cost? After all, even the best, most ingenious design will need money, and most likely lots of it, to be implemented. Well, in 2016, MarketWatch had estimated that reaching the moon cost between $7 and $13 billion, and constructing structures and bases would cost between $28 and $57 billion. These might sound like astronomical sums, but keep in mind that this is a US military project. An average aircraft carrier costs around $13 billion. The US Defense Department had a budget of $705 billion in 2020, but total US military spending came out closer to $934 billion. So, while getting to the moon and building on it might be costly, it's not an unreasonable amount of money for something the US military deems a priority. As for why the US might be moving a moon base higher up on its priority list, the answer is simple – competition. The China National Space Administration CNSA for short, and European Space Agency ESA, have already unveiled plans to build moon bases, with the ESA first announcing its plan as early as 2016. In fact, even private enterprises have become involved in this new moon race. Elon Musk – you didn't think we'd have a discussion about space exploration and somehow leave out SpaceX's quirky founder, did you? – revealed plans for a lunar colony in August 2017. Musk is a big believer in making humanity interplanetary, and is already offering advanced booking for humans to go up into space on one of SpaceX's many rockets. DARPA seeks to draw on private sector innovators like Musk and commercial space companies in order to come up with the next big breakthrough, and most importantly pull ahead of China in the new race to the moon. The US government is concerned that if China establishes a base prior to the US, it will be able to claim the best location and resources as well as establish the general rules of conduct for governments on the moon going forward. The good news is the US space agency's Artemis program – Artemis being the god of the hunt and the moon in Greek mythology – aims to have astronauts on the moon by 2024 to start up setting a permanent human presence. And surprisingly, there are some natural resources on the moon that could be used to aid the construction of a human habitat. Some scientists hope to tap into the water and material deposits beneath the moon's surface to help set up a permanent human colony. 
While a more permanent human settlement is being set up, DARPA hopes these manufacturing facilities will operate mostly with the aid of highly advanced robots, which might be better adapted to moon living. It's a great inconvenience for us that humans need things like water and food and, oh yeah, a breathable atmosphere to survive. However, we seem to be okay with destroying those resources on our planet as well, so perhaps there's another way to live we don't know of yet. Currently, the Nomad program has already officially started. On February 26, 2021, DARPA held a Proposers Day event for companies interested in pitching their mass-efficient lunar designs. The rest of the program will then be divided into three 18-month phases to create subscale exemplar structures, a fancy way of saying smaller samples, so DARPA can adequately evaluate each proposal's material manufacturing and design capabilities in order to pick the proposal best suited for lunar manufacturing. Phase 1 is proof of concept for the proposed materials and designs. They must prove they can meet the structural efficiency targets of the military using DARPA's exemplar problem of a 1 megawatt solar array. In Phase 2, based on the example of a 100-meter diameter radio frequency reflector, companies' designs must focus on risk reduction and surviving the technical maturation of their technology to continue meeting structural targets while maintaining the precision such advanced technology requires. Finally, in Phase 3, the proposals must pass through the most stringent test yet enabling infrared reflective structures suitable for use in a long-wave infrared telescope. All these phases are programmed to test technologies and designs for the majority of hardships they'll face on the lunar surface. Now, for the final and perhaps most important question, what exactly will these structures and manufacturing facilities do on the moon? Well, we're not exactly sure. Since the testing phases have to do with solar arrays, infrared telescopes, and radio frequency antennas, it's probable that DARPA hopes to establish some scientific and military activity on their lunar base. However, the US military has not fully disclosed their plans. The European Space Agency's Director General Jan Warner has a vision for a moon village that would include scientists, tourism, and artists. And China, quite naturally, refuses to say much at all. So far, their National Space Administration has just shared plans to build a lunar base that will be shared by multiple countries. Their exploration efforts have focused on the moon's south pole, an area many scientists consider amenable to human habitation, as amenable as any area on the moon can be due to the presence of water ice. No matter what the outcome of the Nomad program is, one thing is clear. After a long pause, we are once again in a new space race. Or more accurately, moon race. When do you think the US military will build bases on the moon? And what do you think they'll do there? Check out this video right here, or another one to pass the time.